So I just finished The Collector by John Fowles, and here's what I think. So this is the first book from this author that I've read, and it's about a butterfly collector who comes across a lot of money, so he decides to use those funds to collect or kidnap a beautiful art student that he is obsessed with. Now this book explores a lot of themes from beauty, metamorphosis of a butterfly, and all those metaphors, and also money. Now, this is in first person, and the way John Fowles tells the story will just keep you reading forever. The structure and the way it was executed was very well done. We begin inside the mind of this lonely clerk, Frederick, and we were somewhat urged to, I guess, empathize with this situation and try to understand his loneliness. But then this motherfucker just straight up kidnaps a girl. And then you're like, bro, what the f It's so fascinating to be in the mind of someone so deranged, so disturbing. I think John Fowles was able to really represent that character, who this character is, because, dude, he was able to creep me out for pages and pages. I cannot emphasize how creepy this main character, Frederick, is. Now, Frederick is not a one-sided character. He is very complex and nuanced. He's a good representation of a complex human being. Sure, he has a messed up moral compass. I mean, the dude kidnapped a girl, but there are parts of him, qualities, or I wouldn't even say redeemable, but they're just, parts of him that you can understand, like when he talks about solitude. Most people can understand that. We can empathize with that. But then he talks about kidnapping a girl to cure his loneliness. And then you're like, whoa, bro, chill. Just go get a turtle or something. Now, throughout the length of this book, I was able to see Frederick's cunning, his intelligence, and the lack of something important, something crucial an intangible thing that makes us fully alive. Now with Miranda, I was able to see her wit, her passion, and her humanity. The contrast between these two characters are so intriguing to me because he is very rigid, stiff, and by the book. While Miranda, Miranda is so full of life and actually the perfect representation of a butterfly, free and beautiful. And she almost has this this wild, unpredictable energy about her, which made it more sad that this man, this, this man trapped her. This man who only saw the beauty of the butterfly on the surface. A man who was so obsessed, so blinded by patterns and colors, so much that he decides to possess it, to conquer it. That is so sad to me because he trapped her. He collected her and imprisoned her because she was nice to look at. Now, Miranda is, is like not perfect. She's not a perfect person. She's 20. She's made a lot of questionable decisions in her life. She also has her prejudices, but she doesn't deserve that. Nobody does. Now, this book is about obsession. It's about love. It's about things that makes us truly feel alive. Is it a mystery? Yeah, a little bit. Is it a psychological thriller? 100%. It's a battle of the wits. Like, who can outsmart who? By the way, this is divided in two point of views. So the first point of view would be Frederick, and you see everything that's happening. You see all these events, and you see it from his perspective. And then the second part would be from Miranda's perspective, and you, you could see the events. Um... So it's like, sort of feels like a puzzle. So you get your information from one side of the story, from uh, Frederick, and sure, there are like missing pieces here and there, and then you're able to piece it or like puzzle it, complete the puzzle uh, with Miranda's side. If you're looking for a good psychological thriller about obsessive love, I can't recommend this enough. Although look up trigger warnings, because there's a lot in here. All that being said, I'll see you soon and peace.